Shalom. We're going to do a few more of the pairs of letters so we can get an expanded meaning for the different two-letter root systems. Again, you can still get your font chart if you click on the link below. Today we're going to cover this pair of letters, Gimel and Lamed. This is one of the most fruitful pairs of letters. We see a lot of meanings behind this group of letters. If you remember, the gimel has to do with your feet. Uh, remember, there's a little high-heeled shoe there to remind you of that, of going places, or perhaps kicking something with your foot. And the lam, it has to do with moving in a direction or possibly learning something. The basic form, gal, has to do with things that are rounded. And we're going to see almost everything in this group has something to do with being round. So in Genesis... 31:48, and Laban said, This heap, this round pile, is a witness between me and you this day. Therefore, the name of it was called Gal-Ed. And if you remember from the orthography of the Shema, the Ed, the Ayin Dalad, means witness. So here we have a witness heap. In Psalm 42, 8, Deep calls to deep at the noise of your water spouts. All your waves and your billows are gone over me. So the billows are a kind of wave. And we, we talk about rolling waves. They appear to be round and they're moving along. The full verb form, galal, means to roll. Genesis 29.3 And there were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. So that which refers to what is round also has to do with what is rolling. From Psalm 37, verse 5, Commit your way unto Jehovah. Roll your way. Put it on him. Roll it on him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In this form, Gilul, it means an idol, perhaps from the concept that an idol is going to be carved out of a round piece of tree. Leviticus 26.30 And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. Yehovah hates idolatry. Jeremiah 50 verse 2 Declare among the nations and publish and set up a standard publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. There is more than one word for idol as we see here. The idea of the image, that's something that's carved, possibly out of a tree that makes it round. But possibly also for this reason is it an idol. We have from this root, Gilel, which means Poops, dung, which is also round. Job 20, verse 7. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? In Ezekiel 4, 15. Then he said to me, Lo, I have given you cow's dung for man's dung, and you shall prepare your bread therewith. Ezekiel's having to cook his food over a fire. There is a different word. For cow's dung because cows don't make round dung they make patties another word of round is Galil so this is the Galilee if you're familiar with the region and it has to do with a circuit of cities which we're going to see named here Joshua 20 verse 7 and they appointed Kedesh and Galil in Galilee in Mount Naphtali and Shechem in Mount Ephraim and Kiryat Arba, which is in Hebron, in the mountain of Judah. Here, speaking of the cities of refuge, from Song of Songs 514. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. Again, round things. The actual word for wheel is this reduplicative form. We've talked about this elsewhere that Hebrew just loves to repeat things back to back, and the word is galgal, -gal, from Ecclesiastes 12.6. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, 
or the wheel broken at the cistern, from Jeremiah 47.3, at the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his strong horses, at the rushing of his chariots, and at the rumbling of his wheels, the fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands. Probably the best known wheels are in Ezekiel, uh, from chapter 10, verse 13. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. So we see that there are uh, two different words. The first word for wheel, if you can read the Hebrew, is ofanim. Ofen is another word for wheel. If you know the modern Hebrew word for bicycle, it is ofanayim. Ofanayim, two wheels. And the word for motorcycle is ofanoa, wheels that move and with a motor. From Psalm 77, 18, the voice of your thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. So the roundness has to do with the whirlwind, and this is how it comes to mean heaven. Something else round, gul golet, the skull. Numbers 1, 2. Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families, by their house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. This is an old English word that we see in King James. If we look at the ESV, it makes it a little more clear. Take a census of all the congregation of the people by clans, by fathers' houses, according to the number of names, every male, head by head. So they're counting the skulls, each head of a person. We see it again in Second Kings 9.35. And they went to bury her, that is Jezebel, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Now the word Gulgolet comes directly into the Greek. You recognize Golgotha. And it tells you in Matthew 27.33, and when they came to the place called Golgotha, the place where Messiah was crucified, that is to say, the definition of it is the place of the skull. So it comes directly from the Hebrew into the Greek. Now related to this round rolling root, we have the word gala, which means to uncover. As if you were kicking a stone away, you're going to uncover and, and see something. Genesis 9:21. And he drank of the wine and was drunk, that is Noah, and he was uncovered within his tent. Leviticus 18.6 None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am Yehovah. So this is the phrase which is consistently used to mean uh, have sexual relations, particularly illicit ones, once forbidden by Torah. Numbers 22.31 Then Yehovah opened the eyes of Bil'am, he uncovered them, and he saw the angel of Jehovah standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine, The secret things belong to Jehovah our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Why does Yehovah reveal secret things? So that we can do all the words of his Torah. In 2 Samuel 15, 19, we see another extended meaning. Then said the king to Etai, the Gittite, Wherefore do you go also with us? Return to your place and abide with the king, for you are a stranger and also an exile. So the concept of rolling away and revealing comes to mean exile because when the people are exiled, the land is revealed. The land becomes bare. There is also a saying that the exile was necessary in order that the sons of God may be revealed. Again in Second Chronicles 36.20, And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon. They were exiled, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Another word that comes from this root is Megillah, which means a scroll. Psalm 40, verse 7. Then I said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Now, at the time this was written, there were no books. Books didn't come into existence. The earliest codexes, which would be hand-copied books that are bound in a way that we consider a book to be bound, came around the first century. 
the whole concept did not take off popularly until the middle of the 1400s when Gutenberg invented the printing press. So this volume of the book, it's really the scroll of not so much a book, but a written document. When you think about a scroll, you are rolling it, of course, and as you roll it, the next column of text appears in Zechariah 5.2. And he said unto me, What do you see? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Here is a related root, which has to do with uncovering. Genesis 41.14 Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. So instead of gala with a hay, we have galach with a chet. 2 Samuel 10.4 Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to the buttocks, and sent them away. He meant to humiliate them, and he succeeded. Another root we have from this letter pair is gil, which means to rejoice in the sense of dancing around in circles. First Chronicles 15.31 let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, Yehovah reigns. Zechariah 9.9 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, upon the colt of the foal of an ass. And yes, this is where Hava Nagila, we will rejoice together. Uh, they're very nicely lined up in a circle here. I appreciate that. Gil also in the later text of Daniel comes to mean age in the sense that the year goes around and each year you get a year older. We don't see it in other translations, but it is in the New King James, Daniel 1.10. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink, for why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. Gil is the modern Hebrew word for age. Here's an interesting concept. If we put an aleph in the middle, ga'al, it means to redeem. Maybe you're familiar with the term go'el. Genesis 48:16. The angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. The laws concerning the kinsman redeemer, Leviticus 25.25, 25. if your brother waxes poor and has sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. So we have this concept of as best as we can bringing the situation around back to the way it was. In Isaiah 51.10, we see this translation of ransom. Are you not it which has dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that has made the depths of the sea a way for the ransomed to pass over the redeemed? Now here is something you can only see in Hebrew. There is another person who is called the Goel. He is also a near kinsman. But in Numbers 35, 19, the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meets him, he shall slay him. Again, a kind of concept of trying to, even though somebody's lost and dead in the family, that person has the right to take the life of the person who slew his near kinsman. Trying to bring it back around to the way it was before, to make things even equitable. Now, the name of the book of Revelation in Hebrew is Hit Galut. You see the Gimel Lamed there. What is rolled back? We know what is revealed, but when something is rolled back, something will be revealed. Isaiah 34, 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaves fall from the vine and as a falling fig from a fig tree. Revelation 6, 12 through 17. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, 
even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? I pray that this is edifying to you and has left you some things to think about. Until next time, Tasimata Inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.